Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Tuesday, April 25th, 2017 edition of VR News. Had a good chuckle this morning, guys. Uh, I swear you guys don't miss anything. If I have one candy in frame as well hidden, I won't even notice it. Completely oblivious. Somebody out there is going to notice it. And obviously strength in numbers, I get that. But still pretty damn observant all the same. And of course, yesterday with Ridley. That was where I got a good chuckle. Of course it's Ripley. I can only blame it on being massively tired, as is pretty evident, especially at the end there, where I look like I'm literally about to keel over. Yeah, just that. Ridley Scott, the director, on my brain. And that was the end result. Somehow Ripley became Ridley. Not just once, but twice. So... Saw that this morning, and uh, yeah, got a kick out of that. So thanks for pointing that out. All right, uh, just some quick mentions. There were some games missing on my April recap. One of the reasons for that with one of them was simply that damn copyright flag. And at first it bothered me because I didn't get why they would copyright a trailer. I mean, you think you're doing them a service, through exposure, by getting it out there, even if it's, you know, a small channel like this one, it's still marketing, talking about it. Thought about it a little bit more, and you know what? I think what they're after are those channels who are maybe uploading the trailers, you know, not to talk about the game, just simply to profit from the views, the hits, right? Advertise the snot out of it and make some money. But even with that said, it would be nice if the algorithm could tell the difference between somebody like me on the channel where, you know, I think it does more good than harm versus the other scenario. But hey, that's their right, I suppose. It just sucks because that was a game that I had hoped to include. Now, I'm probably going to make that a part one because there were some others I missed. Again, just a little bag the last few days. Lots going on, as you guys know. Uh, so I missed some other titles. So I'll probably just, you know, do a smaller part two and then rename the first part one. No harm done. So there's that. And then of course, Batman Arkham VR launching today for both Rift and Vive. If you purchase it on Steam, then of course you get both platforms right there. If you don't like Steam or you just have Rift and don't care, yeah, you can get it on Oculus as well. It's 20 bucks US. That's where you have to do your own personal calculation on is that a value proposition, you know, for yourself, right? I'm a huge Batman fan, plus I knew I was going to feature it on a quick look, so for me it was a no-brainer, right? But some of you out there may not be Batman fans, you're just looking for a new good game, the graphics look great, and you're not aware it's only an hour in length. It's a really good hour, it's tight, there's lots of cool things happening, but it's only an hour, so go into that armed with the knowledge, it's going to be on sale again, guaranteed. You can pick it up. But hey, if you're a big Batman fan or just want to support VR, by all means, grab it. Like I said, it's a quality hour. Next game, Resident Evil 7. We were expecting that free DLC content any week now. Fortunately, official word from the devs saying it's going to be delayed. And of course, uh, according to Kawada and Koshi, two of the devs, they made the decision to delay the game in order to meet the expectations set by the original release. And I take them at face value on that. Uh, it was a really good quality initial game. It didn't have a lot of bugs, at least for me. It was stable, fun as hell, in my top 12 for the last year for VR games. So yeah, I'm going to take that at face value and believe them that uh, they just want to make sure they get that right and, you know, not leave a sour taste in fans' mouths. Next up, another game from Twisted Pixel, stirring up emotions, the psychological VR thriller, Wilson's Heart. We talked about this the other day. Uh, another example of a game that uh, I would include in the recap it is apparently just an amazing experience from a lot of the reviews coming in that it's not just its art style, which we're going to get back to, that make it unique. It's the engine even. It's a proprietary engine. They built this from the ground up. Hell, they built the whole game from the ground up. So it's not using Unreal or Unity. 
And far from suffering as a result of that, you might think, okay, you know, indie company, how good could the graphics be? Well, I think they really benefit from this engine that they built. Also, going back to the art style now, the choice of going in black and white. The benefit of that, leaving all those colors out, they've got a lot more overhead cleared up that they can use for other things like meaty textures. And it shows the textures for the, the main characters. And again, don't compare that to a non-VR game. Remember the benchmark requirements are way higher with the 90 frames per second if you don't want to invoke reprojection. You've got to make some sacrifices. Going with the black and white, not as many have to be made and they were able to beef up the textures. So it looks great. It's got that real kind of Dick Tracy 1930s, 1940s feel and looks fantastic. I can't wait to play it. Also to mention, you can get it uh, a couple of different ways for no extra cost. One I mentioned the other day, which is part of that whole bundle with the Rift and the touch controllers. The other way is apparently through select video card manufacturers. Now, I didn't have the time to look into that more. I'm sure you can quickly figure that out. And I'll try while I'm editing to include the link. But select manufacturers for the 1080, 1080 Ti, 1070, 1060 are including three free games when you purchase the GPU, that being one of them. So very, very cool. And if you're curious, the other two, Super Hot VR and The Unspoken. Now, if you do the bundle, it's actually four, I believe I said. Next news piece, AMD's latest card, a 1000 US Radeon Pro Duo. It's got two Polaris GPUs into one card, not Crossfire. This is actually, you know, like we've seen in the past with the dual card cards, they're actually working together under the regular driver, relaying that performance boost. Now, this card isn't meant to just provide you know, good performance for virtual reality. And as soon as I see some benchmarks, I will post them on a, on a future episode. But it's also meant as a competitor to the Quadro lineup of cards, which is, you know, known more for rendering type graphics. So it's just a workhorse of a card. 32 gigabytes of DDR5, 72 compute units, which output 11.5 T-flops. Think about that. Pretty damn beefy. And that is, uh, yeah, floating point operations per second. Here's the part that I like, is the fact that you can drive four 4K monitors all running at 60 hertz with this card or a single 8K display at 60 hertz if you run two cables from the GPU to the monitor. So you use a dual cable setup, you can achieve 8K at 60 hertz. Very nice. Next story talks about predictive tracking. Uh, interesting Road to VR article, a little bit more on the techie side, but fairly easy to explain. And the, the idea is basically that the software through an algorithm makes a prediction of what is going to happen in the next frame or few frames, right? If you're walking in a specific direction, it's gonna guess, okay, maybe he's going in that same direction. Or you come to a junction and the possibilities now expand but are still limited to maybe two choices. As long as they don't go too far ahead, the idea is that it can increase performance and again, reduce the overhead. Of course, the opposite is true. If they go too far ahead, they can end up making the whole thing a lot worse. So it's an interesting idea. Check out the link. They go into a bit more detail using the old, uh, you know, Einstein traveling car relativity. They get right into it. But basically put, that's the idea behind how it works. Next up, a couple of VR conferences. Uh, first, the Vision VR and AR Summit next week. A uh, bunch of keynotes. It's going to be May 1st and May 2nd. There's still passes available. They range from 190 US for the educator student pass right up to $500, which is your standard admission uh, price. Uh, keynotes happening on May 1st and the winners 
of the Vision AR VR Awards is going to be announced right after the first day keynote, which is pretty cool. So check that out. Uh, a lot more of the agenda is available at the link below. This last one, you know, if you're into uh, some humor and look, I probably watched this at the wrong time. I wasn't in a good mood. It was kind of, uh, you know, post-work stuff. So to me, it was actually a couple of cringy parts. And look, I'm cringe inducing as well at times. I totally get that. I'm just saying for me, it wasn't as funny as it would have been had I been in the right mood to watch it. But according to some, a very, very funny keynote from Justin Roiland during the VR LA Expo, uh, which took place in LA April 14th and 15th. It's about 28 minutes long, this video. I'm going to include the YouTube link below. But uh, yeah, you can check it out. There were some really funny jokes, some hilarious slides, but there were also some, like you could literally hear the crickets. There was zero audience response. And unfortunately, it was probably the second half that suffered most. I think it was just a little too long. And again, probably a lot of people just not in the right uh, mindset. But if you're up for it, check it out. And if you do, let me know what you think. If you thought it was funny, you know, maybe I was just missing something or expecting too much, but I didn't. And there you have it, guys. That is it for Tuesday VR News. Catch you guys tomorrow. Cheers.